Hello, friends. Welcome to another episode of Hybrid Unlimited. Today, we talk about a wide variety of topics, uh, starting from uh, various different fitness industry brands, uh, supplements. We talk about the Bang Energy lawsuits, their bankruptcy, and uh, a bunch of other things related to that. We we know you guys love the obscure fight sports uh, topic, so we dove into that with a few more things that are maybe a little bit more legitimate or maybe not. You guys can tell us um, in the comments if you're watching this on YouTube uh, or on social media or whatever. Um, we also talk about a little bit of what's been going on in the World Cup and Marcus, if you guys don't know, is very well traveled. So he talks about some of the travel experience he's had, both good and bad. That's uh, most of the episode. Uh, it's pretty funny. I don't know if I'm doing it justice in the description, but I know you guys will have a good time. As always, make sure you tag us in your stories on social media. Tag me, Marcus, Hybrid Unlimited, Steffi, uh, and you'll automatically be entered in a draw to potentially win some hybrid performance or hybrid legacy brand apparel, which is the official apparel of the hybrid performance method brand, as well as the Hybrid Unlimited podcast. While you're at it, check us out on hybridstrengthcoach.com. For all of your strength, training, and fitness needs, we have everything from Olympic weightlifting, strongman powerlifting, to general fitness, CrossFit, and everything in between. You can get seven days free if you just click the seven day free little box off at checkout. And again, that's hybridstrengthcoach.com. Sit back, relax, enjoy another episode of Hybrid. You, I was telling you about the Kratom bar, right? Yeah. Um, have you ever tried Kratom? No, I haven't. The whole thing fascinates me because I feel like it shouldn't be legal. Um, so the first, the first time I ever had it, I went to, I was at Mark Bell's, uh, at super training and I was doing a photo shoot for uh super training or, uh, the MB slingshot apparel. Mm. And I had gotten in the night before, uh, Mark gave me a bottle of Mind Bullet, which is yeah. his uh, Kratom I company. It used to be in the old gym up in the fridge upstairs. Yeah, yeah. And um, I woke up in the morning and I like, how many of these like do I take? There's, uh, they're all in pill form. And he goes, well, I take five, and then I have my coffee. So I'm like, okay, like sounds reasonable. I take five, have my coffee, start uh, going to the gym in an Uber. By the time I get there, I was high. But like, what kind of high? Are we talking like fun high? Like, like oh, cool, I'm gonna do something creative and interesting with my mind today. Or it's, it started like that, and then it be it became almost like a hypoglycemic feeling. Oh, like dizzy. Dizzy, Ugh. and I just started sweating profusely, like more than I've ever sweated in my life, mm. and it got to the point where. In between, there was a whole bunch of different shirts we had to shoot, and in between each, like, shot, they were having to bring me another one of the same shirt <laughs> to put on, and <laughs> they were just drenched, and I couldn't do anything. They were bringing me, I think I had, like, four cliff bars, or what's the... Quest bars. I had four oh Quest God, so bars. You had like no so carbs in you. Just feeling all. so bloated and terrible, oh. and oh, it was a, that was a bad experience. But then I realized... Maybe I think Mark does it like every day, so he might have a bit of a tolerance. That's a pretty questionable and, drug. Well, it is because it's basically opium light, which I didn't know at the time, but it is an opioid. And the thing with opioids is you have to keep you build a resistance to them, so you have to keep taking more to get the same effect. Yes, I'm but aware. They have <laughs> it's part of the danger of doing heroin, <laughs> right? But the problem, what what kills people with opioids is that it slows down your respiratory rate. So yep. the more you take of it, the more that's how people end up dying, right? It just yeah, basically, stop so you stop breathing. Yeah. Um, so I, my point is, I guess he had a high tolerance that I did not have. I said, well, it, what should I take? He goes, well, I take five. And I just took that at face value and said, okay, well, I guess that's I didn't even think about the it. dose. <laughs> I, didn't, I didn't realize, but I had tried it in a more controlled setting, like where I, yeah. Where, do that i had that experience under my belt and uh it was fine but the point was i found a uh, there's literally a kratom bar just down the street from the gym and i popped in today and they have like a laundry list of the different types you can get 
Right. And he, he's explaining it to me. He said, well, what would you recommend? And he says, oh, well, this one's to be have like a regular amount of energy. People use it as like a substitute for coffee. Then there's, you know, the next level that's like, it gives you lots of energy and a sense of euphoria. So I was like, all right, we'll give me that one. You know, if I'm gonna, if I'm gonna try it, I wanna, you know, try the good stuff. And was today's experience <laughs> different? Yeah, much better. Cause well, the weird thing there is you can, it's a bar. So the guy said, do you wanna open it's like a, a tap? drink or like? Yeah, a... it's a tea. It tasted like a, like a sweet green tea. Huh. And uh, I mean, that this was, this one was enjoyable. You just a little bit like, kind of lightheaded and but you know that kind of feeling where you if you if you wanted to focus you could be really focused that's what happens when i take normal drugs <laughs> like actual <laughs> drugs that are created by scientists in a lab <laughs> like adderall i don't like adderall the only one i like is modafinil i take that uh, a lot actually like 50 milligrams and i'm like i feel that i mean that there's a, a lot of studies of that. behind that 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 stuff so it's basically a wonder drug it's fantastic and i don't really understand the mechanism by which it works but that, you, you're you're making me ask a question, uh, like an open-ended question. But in the mm -hmm. fitness community, I feel like influencers are able to get away with promoting kind of like quasi-effective uh, solutions to things. Like not C only like drugs. CBD? CBD is one of them, but I feel like that's like they've just mean mainstreamed that so hard that it's like okay fine like it's there's some science behind it i, I get it like like all the marijuana that you buy you know comes with uh labels that indicate you know the percentage of cbd like there's probably some efficacy behind it but like there's a lot of other stuff a lot of other stuff and the fitness community is really weird for that because there's a lot of guys that are able to like promote quasi scientific uh things for people like solutions right like in general uh whether that be for their diet or be for their physique or be for their mind and now it's it's becoming very prevalent on instagram and mm. other channels where like people are like oh well i use this particular thing like i remember when i was younger i'd read the old like muscle tech ads and they've uh, had all this like quote unquote like scientific study information talking about how much like lean mass somebody put on whilst taking it and it was like a photo of jay cutler and like as i got <laughs> older i was like looking at those pictures i was like you know i don't know if jay cutler gained 15 pounds of lean mass just by taking muscle tech xx12 you know whatever the formulation yeah. was back then because they just there's no regulation behind it but now there's a lot of people promoting like you know i'll see some guys on instagram and they're like oh you know one of my staples of my my you know wellness regimen or whatever they're calling it, it's like uh whatever the the psychedelic du jour is or or like this random supplement like this Wait, stuff like, psychedelic like they're saying you should microdose mushrooms or whatever well that's it's i don't think that anybody says you should but because they have such a big following it's implied right so you're like, oh, well, one of the part of my daily, you know, my routine is you see all these people like posting like here's my routine and I eat 15 berries and oatmeal and here's my one gram <laughs> of mushrooms in the morning. And it's like one gram. of mushrooms. Yeah, it's like, well, they get away with it. And it's not just that, but it's like all these like various pseudo scientific things they're promoting. So like open ended question, but like thoughts. I struggle with it because. On the one hand, I'm like, hey, make your money, get paid, you know? It's in fitness, it's a short lived window of time, especially for people who are like CrossFit competitors or whatever, where. But just take the business out of it. But like, oh. just as a, like a human being viewing it, like, do you think that there's some moral obligation to be like a little bit more honest? I almost feel like it's not the athlete promoting its job, it's, it's, sort of predatory of the companies selling it right it's like if you're for example let's say kratom and you're you're a kratom company and you sponsor an athlete and their pitch to the athlete is not going to be hey this is an opioid that can be potentially dangerous be careful when, you know when taking it's gonna they're gonna say here are all the positive benefits you know this is how many times you should take it in a week you know like all, you know all that stuff and it'll make your workouts better, yeah, it'll focus sure. harder. Like they're gonna say all that. So then the athlete, you know, 
they might not be that intelligent. They might not do their own research. <laughs> they might not be that intelligent. <laughs> Dumb people exist, right? And if someone's like, here, I'm going to give you five grand a month to regurgitate the benefits of this thing and the person's actually taking it and maybe they feel good. I don't know. Yes. Yeah. Uh, it's... I think it's more predatory of the companies than it is of the actual influencers in a lot of cases. Well, they're all guilty, right? Like, that's the first thing we're going to talk about today is Aaron Singerman getting released from jail. And, like, that, that to me, was truly deceptive, what they did back in the day. At uh, Blackstone? Yeah. So what was the story there for people that don't know? Well, the story was, like, you know, I don't know if you guys remember back in the day, you used to be able to buy, like, jacked jack 3d whatever like how the famous you original it? formula right like just mind-blowing just amount of energy and just questionable ingredients and i guess there was just it was the wild west back then and i, you know, I used to take the jack 3d original formula because i would wake up really early before school i think my first class was at 8 a.m so i had to get up take the train and i remember i swear i think i was addicted like I would get up psyched to have my Jack 3D. <laughs> I'd sit on the train. I wonder why. I'd sit on the train going to school, and I'd be like looking at my watch. It's like, is it? Is this? Is this close enough to the workout where I can justify like slamming this thing back? Oh god. And then, but the problem was, yeah, I'd have a great workout and have great pumps and be super focused in the workout. But then my my first class many times throughout the week was linear algebra oh so i just go sit in there completely brain dead couldn't focus at all yeah like the, the complete opposite effect of what it does for you in the workout is what yeah. it did for me in class so i can see why i mean i don't know what the why it was doing that what the effects actually were but it couldn't be good well i'm guessing they were in the same like uh, mindset as Blackstone back in the day because apparently the lack of regulation by the FDA was pretty serious so Redcon well not Redcon but Redcon's president Aaron Singerman before he was the president owner of Blackstone I guess mm -hmm. he was found guilty of deceptively putting anabolics into their old pre-workouts uh, the supplement line I don't even remember what it was um and yeah. he actually served jail time for it. His other, the other guy, PJ Braun, he's still in jail. Yeah, you know, play play uh, just the short bit of this clip. I don't even think he served that much time. He didn't. He served one year of an eight-year sentence. Wow. But in this video, he's he thanks his uh, legal team. He's, as he should he just said they've been working really hard you know to get him out since he's been in um but here he's saying he's going to step away from social media he's not gonna be in the public as much um yeah it's i mean it was pretty sad to see that unraveling i mean i've met aaron singerman a few times in person and he was always super nice to me like i didn't have any bad you know, interactions with him. I knew that there was something going on with the Blackstone lab thing. I knew that he was involved with it. And then when I saw him get, um, indicted, I was, I was super surprised about that. Cause it just seems so far from when he was with so long since he had been with Blackstone. And then, um, did you hear what happened when he, he was let out on bail? No. So he was let out on bail and is this pre prison pre him actually going into prison right. so he he was on bail and he, i think he basically knew i'm going to jail so he, he how I, I don't know what the order of events necessarily were but he was coming back into the harbor on his boat really late at night or in the wee hours of the morning and he ran into a few boats um, so one of the boat owners called the police, police showed up and apparently he was like blackout drunk oh my God. on his boat and they found an, an empty, uh, 40 ounce of, uh, whiskey on it. Oh my so then he, God. I think he got, you know, some more charges for that. And you know, that, that part to me was just sad. Cause it was like, you know, this is obviously, uh, a coping sort of coping mechanism yeah, for what I, I don't listen I, I think whatever they did was obviously illegal and wrong it's like even you know I, from my experience i don't think that anybody should be taking stuff without their own consent so like if you're just if you're just uh consuming a pre-workout and then all of a sudden there's like super draw in it or you know dianabol in it like well, yeah. and you're not a, you don't know what that is you don't know why you know 
it's the, the it's so effective. I would be pretty upset too. I mean, obviously, well, it's especially at the bar for prison. Imagine you know people who are taking those drugs that are liver toxic, like you know any orals. Oh yeah. If that was, I don't know what was what was in the stuff that they, they were selling, but. Could you imagine if it was some, something like that? You don't know, and you're just some guy who likes to go out and, and get drinks. Like most people you're... adjust their habits entirely yeah, so that they're not yeah, drinking, sure. they're not doing other things that would hurt their liver. You could just freaking be killing. I mean, people. it's deceptive for sure. Like whether you deserve prison, like I guess that's up to the DOJ, and they said yes. So uh, I, wa- I I wonder at what I'm sure more stuff will come out, but I wonder why it and it was only uh, one year. That's not typical. Well, pro- no, uh, first of all, I, I don't know if it, like uh, there wasn't a mandatory minimum beyond a year. I'm guessing if he did have a mandatory minimum, it was a year. So he served less than a year of his four and a half year sentence. He probably oh, you said he was, was out on bail, right? So that means he served some time pre sentencing. Oh, uh, maybe. Oof. That's that's the boat, the boating incident. To Oof. say former founder boating of... under the influence. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Crashed into several parked boats. He was drunk. Yeah. That's tough. I mean, boating is not that easy, you know, <laughs> when, you ha- when you're in control of all your faculties. Yeah. So You know what? Go on him for serving his time. Took it to the chin. You do something that's, like, egregious like that, like, at the minimum, you should be fined. Like, they shouldn't have been doing it, clearly. But, you know, it seems like Redcon is, like, a... Oh, sum- sentence reduced. Yeah, Maybe that has something to do with it. He's I, probably a model prisoner. Like, what's he gonna do? Go in there and start fights and become like a gang member? Like, it would be the dude pr- just wants to get out. How scary would that be? Just being a regular like family man type guy. And now you go to prison. Yeah, I'm sure he wasn't in something that was like a maximum security type of situation. But yeah, probably. No matter what, you know, he's he's got to do his time. It's like that movie. Um, what was it called? Uh, Shot Caller. Never seen it. Oh, uh, he was just like a regular guy. Oh, he was in Pensacola. The pen- penitentiary in Pensacola? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I mean, listen, it's unfortunate, but this goes back to what I'm saying. Like, there's a lot of people out there just selling stuff that kind of falls into the gray zone as far as supplements go. And, like, especially because, like, young kids take that stuff. Like, that that's a big yeah, line sure. to draw. And I'm sure we talked about that a couple times before, but you just you don't cross that line. Like, you know... I'm all for people choosing for themselves what they want to partake in in the fitness world. But like, you know, we talked about it last time on the Liver King episode and, you know, it was deception. Like this is another instance of deception. And like there's another thing we're going to talk about today where we're going to talk about the uh, the judgment that just came down against. Uh, I think it's VPX is the parent company behind uh, uh, Bang. Bang and Redline and a couple other ones. And like, you know, he had a couple good products pre his like ridiculous social media blitz but oh did he before bang yeah it was i think vpx pharmaceuticals or or is the parent company behind this i'm pretty sure you'll have to double check me on that george but vpx was like uh the owner of the red line product which is like a pretty popular like it's oh, energy of, drink yeah. Yeah, oh yeah yeah, yeah. those yeah, are so, all the gas stations and everything I yeah that. vpx so um no, it's uh, they they call it pharmaceuticals, which is also funny because they're not really providing a pharmaceutical at all. So yeah, VPX uh, owns Redline. They own this Bang Energy drink. Like clearly, they just hit the gas on this Bang Energy drink and started recruiting all like the social media models. Like, you remember that guy Brad Castleberry? That was yeah, like, yeah. he's just such a clown he's he reminds me not that he did anything wrong um but his sort of like quick rise to notoriety and kind of all the you had people that really loved the guy and then also people that really hated the guy he reminds me a lot of the liver king what's well, the same shtick i don't know what i don't remember what his shtick was but it was it was him. he he did for a long time this thing where he would just he was trolling everybody and all the powerlifters were getting so mad. He remember he kept calling everything world records. Yeah, hey, world record. He would do it <laughs> yeah. after like fastest two hundred and fifty pound guy to like sprint. Yeah, yeah thirty yeah. meter or uh, yeah thirty meters. Or he'd do like a squat and say like world record, but it'd just be a photo of like the bar completely loaded. Yeah, and it was like fifteen plates on each side. Like and he was not wearing any <laughs> knee wraps or a belt or anything. And like, all the powerlifters fell into it so hard. They just remember people were calling him out. Oh, do yeah. a powerlifting meet. 
No, but he was but, just doing it for the views. But these guys, you know, the funny thing about the lawsuit it was actually initiated by Monster Energy. Probably right. has an unlimited legal budget because who are they owned by? Coca Cola, right? Right. And uh, oh, their their distributor uh, for Bang was Pepsi. Oh, also, was it? Yeah. Oh wow. So maybe there's a a deeper, yeah, a long, uh, deeper listen, meaning. We all in know there. who wins that battle. That's yeah. not even a question. But they were promoting this this super creatine. Uh, component of the energy drink that was supposed to, you know, they, I don't, I don't remember uh, every one of the videos, but there were several of them that I watched from this crazy dude, Jack Oak, who is like the clown owner of VPX and bang, mm -hmm. like clearly good at marketing, good at selling, like not going to doubt that for one second, but as far as like what he was selling <laughs> and how he was selling it, like he's, this guy's just a total joke. The way he like markets and present himself, presents himself uh was just just so egregious because he would go and they would like pull these random like scientific studies quote unquote uh, and like claim that bang was you know useful uh in in these i don't know whatever the scenarios were right like but he was claiming that bang was like formulated in a way that this super creatine provided some absurd physiological advantage when you took it and like, well, you know like, what they found out? No, I don't. There, not only was they also two parts. They one said that the super creatine um, could cure Alzheimer's. Oh and come on! They too uh, were found out to not only not have this so-called super creatine in their uh, formula, but there wasn't even any creatine at all. No way. So you just, <laughs> yeah. it, but it was at the top of every single I know. bottle. I know. So, uh, George, go to the go to the one uh, where the girl's talking about the case. And sh throw me the remote because the volume, I don't think, it's not getting picked up from your angle. This whole thing should have just stopped with the guy's haircut. I mean, look at this fucking <laughs> yeah, guy. Yeah, how do you even get off the ground? He's a, a gazillionaire. Like and he's like out there marketing himself with like just it's, it's interesting as a guy who looks like that you know no offense but no offense usually offense you talking about look at him that that should be a behind the scenes <laughs> kind of guy right like he needs to be in the background <laughs> yeah that's not uh you don't want to be the face of this thing there's better options i'm doing it at age 61 you can too hang with bang train with bang and gang with like bro that body's not built by bang i can tell you that you're 61 oh. <laughs> you're on the sauce homie you might as well be out there promoting a bottle of testosterone god bless you i mean good for you still moving around and all that but like uh go, yeah, go, to, the, go to the one i sent you george so he, this, this girl actually explains it really well. Bang Energy just filed for bankruptcy, and from the looks of it, they might not be coming back. Bang initially became one of the best-selling energy drinks in the United States through their influencer marketing strategies. But recently, they filed for bankruptcy after being sued by Monster Energy for $293 million and for additionally losing a $115 million lawsuit against their distributor. Pepsi. In these lawsuits, Bang was indicted for the multiple false and misleading claims that they made about their energy drinks. They claimed that their drinks contained super creatine and that it could also cure Alzheimer's. In reality, <laughs> there is not an ounce of creatine in their drinks, and their claims regarding Alzheimer's are simply untrue. However, in filing for bankruptcy, they are able to access up to $100 million in financing from their existing lenders, which gives them the support to pivot their distribution network. Do you think they'll bounce back? I mean, I hope not, but they're still <laughs> yeah. out there. Yeah, they are. I mean, they, they were the first kind of, these are the things that they did right. 300 milligrams of caffeine, right? Because everybody's a caffeine addict nowadays. Sure. That How do you compete against Monster when Monster's so big? You just put more of the drug in it that everybody's <laughs> after. Right. So that, and then um, coming out with like a hundred different flavors. That was also one. Do you see the names of one of them I just saw on a different page it's before like this? It's like pina colada flavor. No, it was like strawberry skedaddle. <laughs> it was some absurd, like, it was, I don't know. It's on a different page. I'll have to go back and look at it. But it was just. <laughs> there. Uh, but you know what was crazy was basically all Monster did was turn around and go, well, we're just going to make that same exact drink, but call it rain. Right, and but they're not marketing it as if Bangster Berry, like Bangster Berry. That's a porn star name, dude. 
<laughs> birthday cake bash blue and yellow limoncello that's offensive to italians <laughs> <laughs> okay champagne that is champagne flavored one cherry blade lemonade that rhymes that's something delish strawberry kiss like that Frozen one doesn't even rhyme. rhyme that's just going for the ladies on these Froze rose yeah crazy key lime pie uh, the k miami cola where are they based out of I wonder if that comes with like a plastic surgery coupon. <laughs> they're based out of like uh like Weston, like 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 right oh, here. Okay. Broward. Yeah, they're right here. Because well, I remember a lot of the the girls that they brought on as ambassadors early on. They were like Duh. they were Miami girls. Radical skedaddle. Wow. What is that? Like, <laughs> what fruit did he derive that from? Raging raspberry hibiscus. That one's probably got trend in it. <laughs> It's got methyl trend. Just that one's, that in one's unicorn flavor. What does that taste like? <sighs> just tastes like a horse. <laughs> That's nice. Than what I was gonna say. <laughs> oh my god! It's like a whole lot of pina colada. These are <sighs> these are just kind of seem lazy, right? They just like put five people in a room and they're like make up silly names. For I don't it. even think so. I think they just plugged it into one of those fucking AI generators on the internet. <laughs> <laughs> they just come up with something. Man. And there was, they had a bunch of people, man. And you know what? They, yeah, they did. Where you were going, I, I liked what you were about to say because I think to be balanced about it, like clearly they did a great job marketing it. However, yeah. viral they went, you know, had like. Remember when shuffling was a thing? Everyone was shuffling. All of the girls that they, no. uh, they sponsored. I have no idea. We were doing like shuffling videos, you know, like when you yeah, I know to, what shuffling is. They go to the race. That was they, their thing. Yeah. I remember the last Arnold I went to with you guys was like 2018 or 2019. They had like the most massive booth there and it just looked it was like so loud. It was so loud and they had like everybody on stage dancing and it's like they had like good looking male and female models and all that. But they just looked like they got plucked out of an Instagram filter. Yeah, they did. They did. And they were all shuffling. On stage, I don't know if you paid attention. I was just so angry walking by it. It's like <laughs> it was obnoxiously loud. I can't even imagine being the booth beside them. No, oh, forget you have to it. listen to that all day. I would have complained. And watch Brad so Castleberry out. dance on stage. I think he felt so awkward that you could tell when I walked by a couple times. The check must have been right though. <laughs> it must have been. But I mean, he he doesn't know how to shuffle, and all these girls are shuffling around him, and he's like trying to dance. He's, he can't really dance. I mean, he's getting paid, man. He's gonna <laughs> dance. He's gonna do something up there with all those crazy people. I mean, listen, good, good on the government and good on the the justice system for like yeah. cracking down on these are all people that are just lying, you know, like every, you go buy an energy drink. Like you don't have to tell people that it's going to cure Alzheimer's, dude. All they want is caffeine. That's all you have to do. Make it viral. Sure. You can do that. Well, the you thing that's, that's unbelievable to me is there's one thing to make a claim about some proprietary blend that in, involves creatine sure. and say all that stuff. But, but it's another to just not even have creatine at all. In your yeah, thing? I mean, it's like right there. That was the top thing. That was the word. Because, you know, if you're looking at like a case, you're like, oh, okay, there's the bang, the B, big B, super creatine. Like, yeah, and you're like, that's insane. Oh, if I'm going to get an energy drink, might as well get one with creatine. I'm going to have it as a pre-workout. You know, great. And that's that'd be a great job if you were a chemist to just start testing people's shit and be like, this is like literally not true. Just go sue them. Yeah, I wonder if monsters Probably. are paid to test it. But how easy would that be? I mean, the the, the molecular yeah. profile of creatine, like, you could get anybody. You could send it to Derek for more plates, more dates, and be like, hey, man, like, go test this, and <laughs> I'm sure you could figure it out. That's that's crazy. That's a lot of money. But you know the funniest thing is I've I always thought this without, like, really developing it too much. But, like, mm -hmm. when you take creatine, like, you have to take it for a consistent period of time. You have to let it build up in your system for it to be effective. Like, you're not going to get – like, if you just took a shot of creatine one yeah. day – like you're not going to start to retain like intracellular water. Like you're not going to become like you're not going to get right. the benefits of it just by drinking an energy drink, quote unquote, full of it. That's impossible. Unless you were somebody like us who was coming to the gym, having an energy drink every day. Yeah, but like just go buy like a thing of actual creatine that's actually tested. That yeah, that costs like pennies uh, comparatively. Listen, good good on the legal system. Good on you, Coca Cola. You did something good for once. What, here's my other question though why okay you start out you make all these crazy claims but now they were huge right huge they're getting sued for 
293 million 150 Plus million 115 so what, what are they what are they in the hole for now 400 that's uh, a lot of money getting up there three 293 plus 115 it's, yeah we talk about 408 million dollars that's a lot it's almost half a billion dollars <laughs> um you so think? i mean obviously they've got a lot of money hey just start putting the creatine in now right like it, it, you got so far you could have got away <laughs> yeah. with it for like three years and then right. just started putting the creatine in I, I don't, I don't know. Maybe you can tell me this, but like, did they did ever delineate this super creatine like you say thing? What it was. Uh, it, what I wonder. It I wonder if what was that one company that did it? Oh, it was either it was one of the big fast food brands. They um, uh, trademarked one hundred percent beef. McDonald. Oh, maybe. And then they made it not 100% beef, but they, well, their they argument should, they was, with? I don't remember what else was in it, vegetable substitutes, stuff like that, that make it, the, you know, to make it cheaper on their end. But their argument uh, when it, they were litigated was that it was, that 100% beef was just a trademark name. It wasn't a description of what's in the product. Okay. Yeah. I mean, the FDA is really weird about that stuff because even, even like terms such as natural, 100% natural, uh, whole foods, whole grains, like you'll see all these buzzwords on food products and they don't really have any de technical definitions, really. Like it's just, you could say this is a natural product. Like, well, what does the definition of natural mean? Like all the components were derived from this earth somehow? Then yeah, sure, it's natural. But the, cra the craziest part about the 100% beef, uh, beef one for me was how clearly intentionally deceptive it was, right? Like you, you're, what's the argument? The argument is that they're in it to make money, and I, no offense to anybody who's a fast food regular out there, but I just would not presume the average McDonald's eater is sitting and analyzing the, the quality and content of the protein that they're eating. Like, they're at McDonald's, dude. They're just there to get some fucking calories and go home. You know what? Also, if, if a fast food company who's been around for like 50 years or whatever comes out and releases a product called 100% Beef... And you've been eating their burgers yeah, for like, like huh. the last... Well, what was in there before? Extra. Ostrich? <laughs> yeah, what? I thought I was eating beef this whole time. Yeah. Why would it be anything it's else? Like, no, no, no. We got a treat for you now. <laughs> just keep just keep shopping here. You know? That's insane. Well, that was kind of like Burger King's uh, competitive advantage against McDonald's when they first came. I mean, this was back in the day. I don't... I doubt this is the case now, but they never used frozen beef patties. Oh yeah! Like, have you ever seen like the behind the scenes of like McDonald's? So they're coming beef? in like fresh every day. I mean, that's the word on the street. Wow! But this is also a story my dad's told me like twenty times, so I don't know if it's true. I that's what they claim on TV. Like I've done a little bit of digging on okay. it. Okay, like, supposedly that's the truth. I don't trust any of them. You know, like not even Subway, man. Like they had a pedophile. <laughs> oh, you know what you just reminded me of, by the way. We're just speaking about false advertising and all that stuff. Have you seen the documentary, um, what was it called? Pepsi, Where's My Jet? I just saw it come up on my Netflix last night, but I know the story behind it. Like so they good. put out like a sweepstakes where you could win like, I don't know, it's like an old like F-14 or something like that. It's, uh, it's yeah, it's, it's a jet at the end. So they show all, it was a period where they were doing this thing called Pepsi points. Yeah, yeah. So every time you bought a Pepsi, you'd win a certain amount of points. And this guy did the math on how much of an investment it would cost right, to, to get the jet to get the jet he realized right? he would come out on top like big time well, initially he realized uh well, he goes oh okay this is about i can't remember what it was it was a few million four million dollars or something if i just bought four million dollars worth of pepsi i'll get this jet the value of the jet's like 50 million dollars or something like crazy like that yeah, it was like a fighter jet right yeah and well here the caveat to it was too you're not uh, you had to order either it was either three or five of them so you can't just order one so uh, of the jets yeah so the, the, pepsi would have had to buy five, like... five just to give them or, or three whatever the number was right. just to give this guy his one jet so for them it was an enormous amount of money but what what got pepsi kind of in trouble was the fact that you're supposed to have a disclaimer whenever you offer something that's you know satirical or especially when it's comes at the end of a bunch of things that are serious it's like 10 a thousand pepsi points gets you a soccer ball 
you know, I, they're I, definitely going to give they you the ramp it up, ball. and then at the end, this kid flies in in a jet, and some like comment about, "Oh, this is way better than taking the bus," and they say seven million Pepsi points. But the even better loophole, and uh, if you guys don't want a spoiler alert on this, then just skip ahead a couple minutes. Uh, this is at the Arnold. He uh, it looks like it was at least. He found out that you can once you've achieved a certain amount of Pepsi points, you can purchase Pepsi points at a lower cost than what buying the actual Pepsis would cost. So he found oh. out actually it's only like 700 grand. So they send in to Pepsi a check for 700 grand and then ask for the jet. And then that's where the whole... What, what, okay, I guess I'll have to go yeah, watch it. Yeah, yeah, watch it. It's good. I actually haven't finished it, so I don't know. I actually, I, and I didn't know about the story prior to this, so I don't know if he ends up getting the jet or not. I don't. George is smiling. Don't spoil it. I don't think it's very legal for most civilians to own like fighter jets unless they're completely. He looked that up. Yeah, you, know, you, you, you can. You can. You can own. He them. said you're allowed to own one if as long the as stripped if of, the weapons are removed. Yeah, yeah, you have to take all because like a, like even my dad's been in one. Like they're they're private <laughs> people own them. It's just not very common. Like there's a couple billionaires out there that that's what they've done with their money. Like just their jet fans. Well, they just own like mates. Like I don't think a lot of people can own like uh, American made like you know uh, F-16s or anything like mm-hmm. that because they're just it's illegal, but. They were able to acquire like a bunch of like Rush, old Russian uh, or Soviet like fighter jets, and they like private people here fly them all the time. Wow! Yeah, it's pretty sick. That's probably why we have like one pedestrian plane crash per quarter here in Miami. <laughs> Those are like <laughs> this is uh, to completely switch gears. I don't know if you guys watching, you could see this. Tune into the video if you uh, if you want to watch this. But this is actually videos of like. Col- Colby Covington, like hanging out with the CEO of Skin Workout Bang, and, stuff. and like just, oh God, like I get that that's also Colby Covington's look, but it's just such he is actually fits that brand perfectly. I know, which is not good. <laughs> that doesn't, or at least the character he plays does. I don't, yeah, I don't but know. That, that's what everybody knows. Like it's kind of just George. We put ridiculous. the sound on for us there. I want to see what Colby's doing by the pool. Oh, did you see that? So they've pivoted the name of the company. Of which? Of the energy drink. Bang? So, uh, the, sorry, the product name has been changed to Vooz. From Bang? Yeah. Vooz? Vooz. What does that mean? I have no idea. Say Usman's dad in the comments. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. Oh god, this is so cringeworthy. Oh, it is. Look, Vooz. Yeah. It's called a hydration sensation. I love it. Like the oh. funny thing is, he's at a pool. <laughs> yeah, like he's not working like, out or anything. No, it's like he's not even going to the pool to relax. He's going to like get caffeinated. <laughs> Bro, I don't think there's any setting outside of immediately before a workout that I would have something with 300 milligrams of caffeine in it. That's pretty. <laughs> no, nah, it would ruin your day. <laughs> yeah. Just make you like an anxious stress ball. <laughs> yeah, that's brutal. Look at this guy's Instagram. <laughs> it's like... Oh, His I home. can't, dude. Oh my god, wait. Oh my god, no. The top commenter on the right? I think that girl used to go to KO Zone. Really? Yeah. Oh, she's hyped. <laughs> she she liked the video. Yeah, that's her. Bro. Really? <laughs> she's a psychology major. And she's also a golfer and unicorn. She, uh, I was, I was there one day. Oh my god, wait. I have a great story about that. Go back. I'm going to talk shit about people on the internet for a second. <laughs> this girl, there was one day I was back squatting there at, uh-huh. at KO Zone. And you didn't get in the way of one of her videos, did you? In fact, I asked her to move. And because, oh, so she was, I had like, it was like an 800 pound back squat, right? Like I was prepping for something. <laughs> I can't. But I, I was prepping for something, and she was, like, doing some just idiotic stretch in front of me. So I was, like, <laughs> you know, I was probably, like, a little uh, in the zone. I was, like, hi, can you move, please? And, like, I asked her to move, and then she, like, started talking shit about my squat form to somebody, and they told me about it. Like, saying I had, like, a terrible back squat. Like, something to that effect. That, after I, you, know, you did 800 pounds after, in yeah, far. Like, <laughs> sunk it, too, like, in the video. But apparently she had an opinion about the way I back squatted. Wow. I mean... And her only skill is 
filming pornography. <laughs> no, no. All right, this is this is my. F- <laughs> wow. I just love that she was the top commenter on that video. That's well, uh, fantastic. We'll probably we'll leave the uh, her Instagram out, yeah. out of the video. <laughs> yeah, yeah, let's do that. But <laughs> but she knows who she is. I just wanted you to it. know about it. <laughs> uh, what you else? Know, you know who you are out there. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, who, what else do we have on the on the list here? <laughs> oh my god, George. What happens when you go? Um, oh, you know what? We had such a fun response to the. Um, fight sports things that i thought i'd bring a couple ones All that right, i found go. back um th- here is a 400 pound obese man oh, fighting a small woman oh man i thought they'd be in a phone booth oh no that girl looks terrifying look what it says mobile sm- snorlax <laughs> versus <laughs> hannah montana's mother <laughs> wait really not actually it's just a good looking southern kind of is this in russia lady. oh yes yeah, it has russia. to be Look at this. The girl is so fast, she just keeps running away from this. this. <laughs> yeah, it's basically like just don't get caught, right? It's like Bruce Lee in all his movies. He's undersized and just can't get grabbed by oh, the bullets. Big... He's, he's in the clinch. Look at him. No respect, this guy. <laughs> just... he, does, he can't even punch. It's like, clearly, he can't oh. punch. So, what do you know anything about the sports leagues? I know we covered some pretty good ones last time. Is this one happen to have a name, or is it just... I don't know. I don't even know how this gets sanctioned, to be honest. <laughs> I mean, it's, Russia, it's right? It's Russia. So... Easy. All bets are off there. They have, they have uh, car could, MMA. Could you imagine trying to get this sanctioned in the United States? Hey, we're going to take a 400-pound man and have him fight a 120-pound girl. Uh, no. The only closest thing is probably Rough and Rowdy. In Rough and Rowdy, they're, <laughs> they have like, you know, you know, three, four hundred pound dudes fighting midgets and stuff. Like, it's, <laughs> it's a completely unfair fight, fighting federation, if you can even call it that. Yeah. Well, yeah, they're purely an entertainment. She looks scary. The, the, the little Russian girl. I mean, you'd have to be, you'd have to have some serious guts as a little... Yeah, she looks like a, like a little kickboxer or something. Yeah. Oh, my God. Does it say who wins? No, this is ridiculous. Look at this guy. I'm surprised he hasn't had a heart attack. And her trying to, she was like, just trying to get like a, like a thigh kick in on him. Like an inner <laughs> thigh kick and like, <laughs> she can't even get past the fat. Like really make contact meaningfully. Oh, that was the highlight. The highlight yeah. is him like he, flailing and his titty going everywhere. And he, he kind of just smacked her with his forearm. He didn't really connect even. No. I mean, <laughs> the only reason that this could be put on is because that guy is not good at fighting and so fat. Right? Well, he can't even punch. I mean, he's just kind of like. Like, you're, you're not going to put her in there against Brock Lesnar, right? That's a bit of a different. A now, different who's thing. Uh, Gina, Gina Car- Serrano? Gina. Yeah, she switched over to making movies, right? Yeah. yeah. I watched an interview with that girl. She was nuts. You know what she said? Uh She thought it was cool when she was a kid to uh, uh, have black eyes, so she used to just punch herself in the face, give herself black eyes. Just thought it looked cool. A little girl? Yeah. Is she okay? I don't know. Pretty girl, though. Gina Carano. Right. She was a... Man, you know what bums me out about her? is like She played a really good character in that Star Wars series, The Mandalorian. And like really? they kicked her off because she said something that was Dude, this brilliant trick for just 15. 15- uh, brilliant. Trick. Wait, they kicked her off for what? No, she made some like comment in the public sphere that was obviously like not Disney uh, sanctioned or whatever. Like she went off in some tweet, had a rose. Uh, it was bar like moment. some, I don't know. She said something to the effect of like uh, touching on, you know, whether it's, you know, I'm not even going to say it, you know, let's just, let's not go there. But it was something that was obviously controversial enough that like got her banned. Oh from my the... God. Look at the size of this girl. And they have the names reversed there. So I guess yeah, Gabby Chris, Garcia Chris is. Cyborg. Yeah. She is a that's, scary Is lady. that pride? Where anything goes? It's just clearly Risen? not a drug uh, tested well, Risen federation. Risen is uh, done by the former owners of pride. But Who is you, that? I don't know. That woman's Bro, a giant. Whoa. One of the things Play that I found sauce, interesting, dude. the um, contracts in Pride specifically stated that they would not be drug tested. Clearly. Yeah. Do you see these mutants? But that was another league that, um, I don't know, it seemed like sometimes they had uh, 
like weight classes. Yeah. And then some of the tournaments were just anything goes because you have like Bob Sapp fighting like one of the little Gracie. Dude, I, I feel dudes. like in any kind of uh, fighting sport beside jujitsu, I guess like if you are to allow the like unfettered use of performance enhancing drugs, like you're putting your all of your fighters in like a really really dangerous position. <laughs> the, the problem I see with that, and again, there's always two sides. At the on the one hand, I'm like. These guys are literally going in there in there to kill each other. Not really, but essentially. Right? I mean, they're just inches away from doing it. That's the thing. The ref steps in and makes sure, hopefully makes sure it doesn't happen. But leading up until that last second, that's what's going on. It's modern day gladiators. Well, dude, I mean, think and about then, it. Like, what, if, what if Leon Edwards' head kick was powered by Tren? Well, that's Fuck. the problem, right? Because you can take a bunch of steroids. It doesn't make your skull better at withstanding a nope. blow, right? But he might produce an extra 15% of force. Which is, yeah. Which you know, like if he just takes something that is like multiplies force production to like a reasonable degree. And yeah. suddenly you mix that with a head kick to somebody's skull. Like, and you know what? In, that's scary. In sports like boxing or kickboxing, where the only things that you're doing are um, uh, striking... I think that's even more dangerous because you can't just take a guy down. You can't you can't overpower a strong punch by, you know, you know, taking some guy down and twisting sure. his arm. You you're going to get hit. Like how many how many times do people get hit on average in a oh, boxing match? Hundreds? God, but what's the oh, that, This that. is something I don't I don't Oof. know. That was the most insane fight ever, by the way. If you, did you watch that live? I did, and it was the and I bet on Edwards. By the way, did you? Yeah, made a lot of money. Did you? Yeah, <laughs> I was so sure going into that fifth round that, like Leon, did look a little bit tired. Like I knew he was a phenomenal fighter because I probably watched his last two or three fights before that, and like he looked very good. But to see somebody win in the last sixty seconds of a title fight. Like that against arguably, you know, not even arguably, he was ranked number one pound for pound in the world going into that fight. And to see him get any sort of uh, attack that was effective was so impressive. And then to go further than that and knock him out with this beautiful head kick was 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 just unbelievable. He was also the first fighter to take Usman down in the last 16 UFC fights. Could you imagine taking a wrestler like that down? It's like watching Izzy lose just now. Like it was shocking, but not that shocking because Pereira yeah. is just a goddamn monster. It, I honestly, I love Edwards for so many reasons. He, you know, he had been he was out for a number of years. People, so many people counted that guy out and said he'd never beat Usman. Um, he, you know there was like they're saying he wasn't wasn't tough he was ducking jorge masvidal all these like whatever the guy was just smart and strategic he took the time he needed he prepared i don't know if you saw the videos of his team right before it's literally them after weigh-ins and they're watching video of usman and they're like oh every time uh yeah they they throw a certain shot he ducks down and 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 to the right yeah so I remember they, seeing a clip of that, but afterwards, like and way then afterwards. after that, and in the change room, they're drilling it, so they're drilling that exact same thing, and you so, could you could watch a fight like this, and if you don't know the background on it, you think, oh, Edwards was lucky, he got a lucky head kick in the last couple of minutes, but no, it's like dude. no, this is something they recognized, drilled, and were looking for that opening the whole fight, and it came down to the wire for him to, well, just to had execute to find it. that connection, you know. And when he did, it was... Well, it was pretty epic because not only did they have to recognize that beforehand, but, like, look at just... I mean, hit that... Ooh. He ducks down just a tiny amount to the right. George, I mean, you, his, his right play? arm is not even dropped, really. Oh. And that was a, just a perfect fucking just sniper of a fucking head kick, man. I, oh, I've never seen anything slow-mo. like that. Wow. Just a perfect connection. And I also like uh, Edwards because he's respectful. He's a respectful guy. He does. He's. Yeah. He said. He even said, "I don't. I'm just. I'm just me. I don't need all this hype, shit talking, whatever. Mm-hmm. You know, it's just not for me. When people like me try to do it, it seems forced. It looks fake. It doesn't look good. So, did he fight Paulo Costa or Marvin Vittori or anything? I don't think so. That's interesting. I mean, has I'm not thinking of the wrong weight class then. Uh, Can you pull up his uh, record? 
Now they're starting to think like of, his uh, uh, yeah. If you Wikipedia him and just let's see all his fights, like if Pehera had tried to fight, uh, God, the one eighty five class. Am I thinking of Marvin Vittori? He's he's a middleweight, he, right? Yeah. Okay, let's see this. I'm trying to think of the competitors that Edwards would have had to fought fight before this. Oh yeah, so he uh, Diaz. He yeah, that's not fair. Well. No contest? Why was it a no contest? Oh, that there? With... I remember that fight when he fought Bilal Muhammad. Uh, yeah, I remember that. He beat uh, RDA, which I mean, RDA is our boy, so that makes me sad. At, look at that, that. That's a pretty strategic uh, uh, resume going into that fight. I mean, RDA, like great fighter, but I mean, he's a little bit older now. Same with Nate Diaz, a little bit older. Same Donald with Donald Cerrone. Cerrone. Uh, I think I remember watching the Gunnar Nelson fight. He's a pretty good fighter. Yeah, I mean Diaz like great fighter, but Diaz is always Diaz could lose his next fifty fights in a row. If I mean he, I know he's retired and now, he but if he had that fight too, Diaz. That's the thing. Shook him. That's why people keep watching Diaz no matter what because he just goes zombie mode. It's like you can't you can't knock that guy out. His brain's size of a walnut and his skull, <laughs> his skull is four inches thick. So he's gonna keep coming no matter what, and he all and his uh, cardio is great. So. There's always that chance that he's and if he gets you on gonna the ground, clip you, like, and he's got the BJJ. So, oh, dude, yeah, I feel like guys oh. that are good at sambo and good at BJJ are some of the scariest in the UFC. Yeah, like if you get a guy like that against Pajera, and I don't know who's a really proficient uh, jujitsu athlete or who has like a good jujitsu background in the middleweight division. You get somebody like that against Pahara, like he was starting to struggle a little bit when he got to the ground. Who? Pahara. Well, yeah, for sure. I mean his first He's starting to get a little gassed his, out. His, that could have been the weight cut. He but... lost his first MMA fight that way. Did he? On the ground? Yeah. So I, I mean, do you know of any really, really good jujitsu practitioners in the one eighty five division? One eighty five. I mean, I don't know if Costa is like trained as a, a jujitsu practitioner. Oof. I don't know if we talked about this before, but the Oof. I felt like this was just a bad move for the UFC. Letting Pahara fight him? Yeah, because he's the one guy that could beat Izzy. But then anybody else in like the top five to ten are just... We did talk about this before, but they're just not people that he stacks up well against. Like, let's look at the top, the top ranking here. So middleweight, right? So he's gonna have to it, like if there is a title okay. challenger, like Ro think about Robert, what if Robert Whitaker or Robert Jared Cannonier. Have you seen Jared Cannonier and Derek Brunson the, fight? Oh my god! They're, they're gonna kill him. They're, look, all, all those guys have wrestling. Cannonier, Whitaker, Vittori, Derek Brunson, dude. Just let Whitaker take a crack at that guy. Like the, Whitaker is a fierce fucking fighter. He's one of my favorite. He's honestly. a great striker. Super tough, super technical. Does so like, he have a wrestling background? I don't I remember. Know, I don't know I've seen is. him, but he definitely can wrestle. I don't, I don't remember what, his... what fight it was, but I remember he had pretty good takedown defense. That's but Pereira shouldn't be fighting in the division. That's insane. Yeah, six six. What... He's just, but he's just too big, man. That yeah. weight cut is ridiculous. I know. What what what, what did he cut? You said there was like two fifteen pounds or something. Yeah, it was thirty pounds at 30 least. Pounds? Yeah, the one video I saw that he posted was where he was weighing in like around two hundred fifteen pounds the next morning. Or like later that day, even it's the first guy I see on that list else. that it's like, okay, maybe Pereira will beat is tenth spot Darren Till. Yeah, I mean I, he hasn't had a, a good streak lately. He was such a victim of. Um, I was watching a podcast earlier where they said the Irish and the uh, English, they are so passionate about their fighters mm. that. Be and they get so much support when they start having a little bit of success that it pushes them kind of to the forefront too quickly for their development. And then they end up in positions like Darren Till a lot of the time uh, where he's got all this hype behind him. So he's getting these bigger fights, but he's not ready for it yet. And then, you yeah. know. But do you think Pahara will fight again as a middleweight? I see the Izzy rematch for sure. There's no way he just... See, but what's the outcome that. of that? What's the outcome but of also, him fighting him again? Look at the next white class up. What, is he going to go against Yuri? Yuri's uh, out with an injury. Or eh? Glover, Teixeira. 
I mean, Magomed yeah. Ankalaev. I think he's supposed to fight this weekend, isn't he? Anthony Smith. That's a tough matchup too. Man, that that weight that division hasn't been so popular lately. I mean, like no. Yuri is Glover Tessera is. I saw a recent. Uh, Jan is like a, lo- a lovable. Yeah. He's like a wholesome guy. But apparently, this guy Magomed Ankalaev is a force to be reckoned with, and I believe yeah. he has a fight coming up. He's fighting this weekend. Yeah. Right. That's uh, okay. who was it that pulled December out? December tenth. Yeah. Yeah. He, oh uh, man. Uh, he was supposed. Jiri. Jiri. Was it Jiri? Yeah. yeah he he vacated the belt. Yeah. He vac- this. This is. I think this is. No, this isn't a title fight, then, is it? No. I don't know how that works if somebody vacates the belt, but. Well, usually they have an interim, but did he? He didn't have the belt. Did I he? watched that fight against Smith too. Oof, that guy's got a fucking egghead on him. <laughs> yeah. Good God, look at that thing. Who did he lose to? <laughs> He lost one fight in the UFC. And I'd be curious to see this guy. He looks just terrifying. But uh, all, again, all I don't, those, if you have an OV or an, yeah, yeah, yeah. Don't an fight AEV him. Yeah, in don't your fight name, him. don't fight him. If you don't have a mustache, stay, nah. away, stay, <laughs> stay, away, a mustache. <laughs> stay away from me. <laughs> that's that's like everyone's worst nightmare. Because imagine a 200, I mean, presumably like 25, 230 pound dude just just wrestle fucking you into submission you're you're gonna just have a horrible day so exhausting and then they're gonna ground and pound you yeah, and it's gonna be terrible him. terrified no mustache and he's gonna kill yeah dude if you have if you have a beard and no mustache and you're in the ufc <sighs> allah bless you <laughs> what's next on the list george we're talking combat jujitsu right yeah i this i saw i actually thought this was badass we talked about a lot of weird ones before but this one you're allowed to open palm, op, oh. open hand hit, and that's not a slap, right? Like that was. Look at him. He just he, knocked a guy out. Just like he just shoved his wrist into the guy's face. Like yeah, it was almost like a karate style. Uh, I respect the sport of jujitsu for what it is. I don't think this adds anything to it, so I'm gonna give this thing a thumbs down. Really? Like I, re- I respect phone booth fighting, car fighting, car jujitsu. I'll take all that stuff, dude. I'll take. The, the 10 on 10 jujitsu we talked about before, but this is like, there's like a beauty to jujitsu that like lies in the boundaries of the rules. But like, Hard, what does that say? Hard pass for me? Watch this. Yeah, I, I, this is just like wrestling with, this is just like MMA, you know? Like, it's what, kind of splitting hairs between jujitsu and MMA, isn't I, it? I doubt that if you were to show this to any serious jujitsu practitioner, that they would say anything nice about it. This but it does, it does add a real world practicality to it a little bit, well, right? Like yeah. you can't just right in the real world, you can't just try to twist somebody's arm and not expect to get hit in the face, right? They're well, gonna no. try to get you off well, as, also, in any like, way you can. On the flip side of my defense of jujitsu, like imagine somebody breaks into your house and you just get on the ground. You're like, come down here and fight me, brother. I've, have you seen those videos? <laughs> yeah. They're so good. Someone he's like scooching over to him. Yeah, while they're on just the ground. like pull out a gun. Like, dude, what are you doing down there, man? Like, I'm here to rob you. <laughs> but again, like if you're like just a normal dude trying to rob somebody and you don't know they know jujitsu, like you're about to have a real bad day. Yeah, there's yeah, like if it was just or you got in a, a fight. You know, at like a, yeah. you know, outside of a bar or something, and the yeah, other like, guy knows jujitsu. It's definitely a huge advantage. Yeah, there's. I like the respect and like the the kind of like grace, for lack of a better word, that the people that participate in jujitsu put onto the sport. Mm-hmm. It's like a very classy activity overall, and like the guys that are really really good at it are just absolute fucking killers. Yeah, I think when they turn into MMA fighters and like if they go into the UFC, like. They're terrifying. Like, dude, have you ever you've seen videos like all of the really, really good videos of uh oh my god, my like Gordon Ryan. Well, Gordon Ryan's a freak. Galvao. Uh, he he trained too. Tra- he's trained here a few times, actually. Yeah, yeah. No, I'm thinking in the UFC, man. I don't know why my brain we're, we've gone all over the place. My brain's completely gone to mush at this point. <laughs> um one fifty five champion. My like one of my favorite fighters. I don't know why one fifty five. Brazilian dude. What the Oliveira? Yeah. Oh, oh yeah. yeah. God, Jesus. Well, he's not Oliveira. anymore, but he was. No. Yeah. He's number one in my heart. Yeah, yeah. But like every fight that he ever, you know, got rocked in, he just kind of like fell down to the ground, and people just refused to go down there with him until he met uh, the the other Dagestani dude. Um, 
Jesus Christ. Too many obs. Yeah, I know. Anyways, but, yeah. uh, scary. Um, it's, it's a scary thing to be really good at in the UFC because you take away somebody's ability to like go to the ground with you. Oh, yeah. Look at Dil- – and this is crazy. Dylan is this da- real? Yeah, Dylan Dennis got like – taken out by a uh, security like a bouncer at a club and the guy was just good at jiu-jitsu <laughs> no but the thing is isn't Dil- i'm pretty sure dylan dennis is like a national champion or like super high level jiu-jitsu practitioner is he yeah that was his his whole thing like that's what makes him dangerous but then this look he gets choked out he gets choked out by this uh just random security guard is that possible he just met like a random black belt in disguise or, or this guy was just really really big i don't think dylan dennis is that big That's of a true. guy. I guess you can always overpower somebody with size. <laughs> and then he gets arrested. <laughs> Dude, I'm, this is going to kill me. Who, who just won the last fight against Charles Oliveira? Uh, George, help me out. Is Jesus Christ, yeah. Okay. Now I can, we, we can move on. Yeah. <laughs> All right, so I don't respect combat jiu-jitsu. I'm sorry if anybody likes that sport. I don't think you do. <laughs> We've probably introduced every listener of the podcast to uh, obscure Russian fight sports. Uh, which brings us to our last fight of the day. I don't know how we've gone down this rabbit hole, but uh, World Cup player attacked. So if you guys don't know, there was a a fan, quote unquote. That- no, I think he was. It was either a fan who grabbed the like. The, I can't remember what they're called, but the guys who wave the flag when the ball goes out of bounds. So this is a guy that ran onto the field. To, uh, it was either is or it was the actual guy whose job that is flips the oh uh, flips it upside down and look breaks it on him. Who did he hit? Just a player. Oh, no. Really? Yeah. It might have been the goalie. He just picked up the wow. Turkish news source for this. I like that. Which is crazy. I think whoever he that guy is might never the see the light of day stick. again. Is there a backstory to this? I actually have no idea, but this was right in the middle. I saw this a little while ago, <laughs> and this was right in the middle of all of the different controversies that were going on. That's not a good look. It's not. It took a few seconds for somebody to run Is over and grab George? this guy. I think that's a U.S. player. Yeah. Really? Oh, no. Yeah, it was. That is a U.F. Or, yeah, U.S. uniform. You're right. Wow. Really? So. Just, that's probably worst oh, case scenario, right? Oh, the guy ran all the way across the field. Crazy that he got two whacks in. It's pretty good. He's definitely going to spend the rest How of his he... life in a prison. Yeah. I don't think we'll ever hear from Oof. that guy again. But Not a good imagine if that was uh, an American sport. Like, how long do you get to be on the field before someone takes you out unless you're, like, completely juking the security? Oh, dude, forget that. I mean, he would have just gotten the shit kicked out of him by every other player on the team. Imagine if he did it to That's a true. football team. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> you think I would die. He would have CTE. <laughs> a player did finally run in. I wonder what he did. What's the beef? Is there a back around it, George? No, well, George pulled up the Turkish news source. Uh, my Turkish is not very good, so <laughs> I'm not going to be able to interpret what See they're if saying. You can find something on uh, Google, because I wonder, is it just, I mean, maybe he was a, a, you know, devout Muslim and didn't like the... Oh, come on. No, that is, that's crazy. Publicist Pulisic? Oh. I mean, oh, well, the U.S. was proposing prior to the World Cup to have the LGBTQ plus flag uh, be represented in their logo. Do you remember that? I think a lot of people were. Yeah, I do remember that and specifically. Then they, were, they had the armbands that a lot of people were trying to do it. FIFA, I think they okayed it, right? They were they finally gave the blessing, which allowed people to do this. The last I heard of it was, I don't know if FIFA stepped in, but I heard that... Um, whoever was in charge of, of it in Qatar was saying you'd immediately get a yellow uh, flag, a yellow card. So <sighs> I uh, get it. I yeah. just think that like, if you're going to do it, you have to know the context to what you're doing it. Like if you're going to do it in the heart of the middle East, like thank God they're not in like Saudi Arabia or something. Yeah. This is Qatar is... Uh, more Westernized? I think slightly. I think like, like, like sort of a halfway between Dubai and, I don't of- think that they're even that far advanced. I think Dubai is like a shining example in the Middle East. Like Oman is like a little bit more progressive as well. But I, I, Dubai is like a very special place in the Middle East, uh, except for like a very small number of other uh, areas that are as progressive as that. But 
you know, most places they stick to their customs or traditions, which is fine. Like they're allowed yeah. to do that. That's their country. But you know, you have to know the consequences of What's you know, that, trying George? to deliver a message there. Why did the German fans cover their mouths? Um, oh, free speech. Oh, uh, so it's it was like a silent protest. The German team all covered their mouths at what is this? It must have been like their the, the kickoff Pre- or something. Yeah. First game, I get yeah. it, man. I, I I get the like desire to to speak out on like a global stage, and like I can respect that. You just have to know like the context of which you're doing it. What's your experience been? Because I know you've been to a lot of different parts of the Middle East with traveling with Catherine and stuff. Did you run into any sort of weird, um, so like, sexist or? Yeah, actually. So last we like we got legally married in June of 2021, and when we did that, we went to. Istanbul for two weeks so we stayed in the most like progressive part of the city which is just it's like a really fun young when I say progressive it's just where the young people stay it's uh it's called Bayolu Mm. so that neighborhood is I guess it was the site of the Arab Spring protests that occurred there in 2011 so there's a place called Taksim Square it's kind of at the top of the hill in this neighborhood so there's like a actually just recently like it was terrifying. It was a bombing that happened on Istikal Street. So Istikal Street's like this really beautiful, famous... George, can you pull up a picture of it? It's called Istikal Street in Istanbul. Um, just so you can get like context of what this is. I-S-T-I-K-A-L, I think is the way they spell it. Um, anyways, there was a bombing there recently. Uh, but when we stayed there in 2021, it was like... It was like the coolest street ever. You could walk there at all hours of the day. Our Airbnb was right off of it. Like we made friends mm. with. Oh, they have the streetcars and stuff. Yeah, there's like this old historic streetcar. Uh, the funny thing about that first cool. picture, I think that was taken out in front of the Russian uh, consulate. That one right below it, to the right. This yeah, one? I think that that on the right. That I used to walk by that every day. There's a cool coffee shop by it. Um, that is cool. Yeah, but I think that's the Russian consulate. But anyways, there was a bombing there recently. But when we stayed there in 2011. There was two consecutive protests, uh, which we didn't know about. And while you were there, so while we were there, the first one was a gay rights protest, and they had previously organized a march down the street. Now, if you don't know, you guys listening don't know, the government in Turkey is a bit repressive uh, in terms of like cultural progressive type stuff. So. One day we were we were in another neighborhood called Nishantashe. We like went to lunch, came. We were coming back, and then. You know, in the morning, we had seen some, like, buses. Uh, there was, like, a street that we walked up to get to a coffee shop, and there was, like, a ton of these buses. And we started to see some police, but we didn't think anything of it. It totally slipped our mind. And then came back from lunch, and, like, it was like, imagine a fucking zombie outbreak was about to happen in that neighborhood. They had cordoned off with checkpoints every access point around this entire neighborhood. If you look wow. at this thing on a map... I this mean, is in the more progressive area. It's a young area. It's a very young area. And it was the site of the old Arab Spring protests in 2011. So it's where a lot of young people gather and there's universities near it and stuff like that. But the day that this, this was seven years ago, but the one that I'm talking about happened in 2021, but we were coming back and like police, riot gear, thousands of cops, gates, buses full of like, like basically riot cops just like this. They had German shepherds and there was a point and it was actually right by Galata Tower where we were staying where they started uh, the march. The the protesters gathered there, but around that, I mean, like, and I can't even describe to you the scale of this neighborhood because it's fucking huge, but it was completely barricaded off. We couldn't even get home to our Airbnb. Like Catherine, like just. What were they doing? Just making sure you're not gay? They wouldn't the let anybody out. in because they didn't want anybody <laughs> oh, having want... access to this protest. Oh, they like a block the media kind of deal? No, they blocked everybody from getting in or out unless you were already there. So people couldn't get to the march. So it was like oh. this, but there was hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of these cops. And that was like the first time we had experienced it. And we actually had to like fight and argue our way. Like, no, like our fuck, like we're American. We're not doing this. Our Airbnb is over there. Like, we need to go home. And she, like, argued our way in there, which was, I was, like, pretty pissed at the time. I was like, you're going to get us fucking arrested. <laughs> like, you're right. But, of course, like, her, the lawyer mentality. Like, yeah, she's yeah. not taking no for an answer. So 
that was insane. I mean, that was like the first time I've ever seen something like that in person outside of, I'll tell you another story after, but the, the second time it happened while we were there, same trip, same thing was happening. It was a women's rights march. Did the same thing. Which one got was more heated? I think the gay rights one. Yeah. But they had, I mean, just the fact that they had a, you know, 500, uh, like, like riot police officers basically with attack dogs. Oh, and it was like, you know, people just, you know, marching. They were just peacefully marching for gay rights in a country where that's really not like popular, but there's a strong youth presence there enough to, you know, put it out there. This is, this is like a perfect example. Are they shooting tear gas? Yeah. With wow. paintball guns. With paintball, little tear gas but paintballs? Like if, you, if you see there, those, like the riot police fences and all that stuff, like that was everywhere. And like wow. way more cops, way more scary looking than this. This is like, this is like Bush League shit compared to what we saw. But I mean, this was a year ago. So maybe this was like the same exact ish time. Um, the only other time I'd seen something that severe when I was in Tibet. So I like, I went on a crazy trip to China, North Korea and Tibet, Japan, like 2012. It's, if you don't know the backstory on Tibet, Tibet was... It's called an autonomous province now, but it was a right. independent country up until the 1940s, and the Chinese basically just marched to, to the borders. The no. Tiananmen Square thing? No, no, that was that was. I'll, I can explain that too a bit, but Tibet was just a peaceful, rural ass country. It's like the highest plateau on earth. So then, like the People's Liberation Army just marched into Tibet and uh, just took the country. Um, it's actually a really, there was a really good movie with Brad Pitt. Um, I think it was called like Seven Years in Tibet, something like that. Kind of told the story of this whole thing, but the Chinese took it over. So when oh, I was there. Is that where the monk lit himself on fire? It happens all the time, actually. And it's really, it's really sad. So in downtown Lhasa, is that Lhasa is the capital of Tibet, but it's also the ancient home of the, the Dalai Lama. So there's this massive... Uh, like gigantic palace with all these gold Buddhas that are thousands of years old. And uh, it's a beautiful place, but it's also the spiritual and religious home of uh, Buddhism. So the Dalai Lama used to be there until the 1940s and the Chinese kicked him out. But now when we went, I, like when we were there, I mean, it was like, it was like a Chinese military fucking parade every day going around there because there's protests all the wow. time. People are always <clears throat> protesting against the oppression in Tibet. But just to get into like, and this is like a, imagine like to get into the old part of Jerusalem where Christ was born, like, you know, something mm -hmm. of that significance or going to Al-Aqsa Mosque, something like that. There's, there's like metal detectors and riot police everywhere in that city, constantly making sure that these type of protests don't occur. The Chinese are very oppressive against that place. And it was fucking, it was sad to see. Well, have you seen what's been going on with the COVID stuff now? For the first yeah. time ever, they're protesting. They're, they're all fighting back. Well, it's insane what they're doing to them. I mean, it's insane yeah. what the government in China is doing to the people of China with I mean, this bullshit look, COVID zero stuff. I mean, it's almost four years into the COVID thing. The rest of the world's been like, all right, we can chill. And they're still locking people down, having drones fly through the cities. No, it's... It's a dystopia, to say the least. And, I mean, you know, recently, the... Uh, premier of china xi jinping like allowed himself to change the constitution in order to give himself a third term in office basically he's gonna be president for life now oh my and God. he had the there was a prior i don't know if it was like the one before him uh or a couple guys before him but one of the last leaders of the country it, i don't think it was the guy before him but it was a couple before him like had him removed publicly from like a party congress in front of the entire world had there was the guy sitting next to him at like the Chinese People's wow. Congress or whatever, they had him just picked up and brought out like against his will. The current leader, the current guy was like, you know, I don't know if you ever seen these things, but like when these communist governments they they get together, they do these like congresses, which is right. like it's ridiculous because like he's the only dude making any decisions there. But one of the past leaders of the country, uh, not his predecessor, but maybe the one before him. He was sitting like directly next to him and like they had security come in in front of thousands of people wow. like political representatives to take the dude out and like it was almost this it was almost like showcasing like he's the only dude in control they like in countries like that even in turkey and i love turkey but like 
is just unchecked power. So they have the ability to do things that are, you know, uh, 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 questionable to say the least. Like you just couldn't get away with in other countries. But they're absolute, you know, monarchies or dictatorships, depending on the country. Jesus. I mean, yeah. and there's only so much the rest of the world can intervene into, you know? No, you can't. I mean, you can't do that stuff. So anyways, uh, I feel like that wraps it up for today, guys. Thank yeah. you all for joining in on our rambling social media <laughs> and socio-political commentary review. <laughs> yeah. Thanks for coming <laughs> along on the journey. Yeah. All right. Next time. Next time.